I've got two questions for you guys today. Actually, four. Four. Two major questions and, you know, two other questions. So four questions for you today. The first one is, declared virus-free today, what country? That's the first question. Second question, what virus was it? Se third question, so second big question, but the third question overall is, with one year between them, both were leaders of their respective governments. One was the first ever to be impeached. So that's question number three. Who was this person? The other served a record four terms in office. That is question number four. Who were these people? Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sotoni Afiasimama. Thanks for dropping by once again. If you're a subscriber, you are a returning visitor, you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get cracking with today's Today in History. It's the 29th of December, and on this day, several centuries ago, this guy was killed. He was assassinated. Who was he? His name was Thomas Beckett. He was assassinated by knights of King Henry II of England. He was killed in Canterbury Cathedral. Why was he killed? Now, the reason was that he was engaged in conflict with Henry II, the King of England, over the rights and privileges of the church and was murdered by followers of the king in Canterbury Cathedral. Soon after his death, he was canonized by Pope Alexander III. So this is Thomas Beckett, who was murdered on this day in Canterbury Cathedral. The year was 1170. Um, you know, some people talk about um, the church um, not getting involved in politics, um, it, it seems like he this was an armed conflict and he ended up paying um, dearly for it, he ended up paying the ultimate price. Um, you know, my take on this, you know, when Jesus Christ was on earth, he said that his kingdom was not part of this world. And I think that that's the, the sort of um, position that the church, religion in general, should take. You know, why meddle in politics when you have a belief that your destiny doesn't lie within these realms? Why? Um, when Jesus Christ was on earth, he never asked his followers to take up the sword and fight physically. He never did that. What's happening today? It's the opposite. You know, there's stuff happening all over the world in the name of religion. You know, so well, he was made a saint yeah, it's canonized by Pope Alexander III, um, treated as a martyr. Um, if he was actually involved in conflict, he he wasn't really a martyr, was he? A martyr is someone who doesn't actually resist. You know, he carries out his beliefs based on his own convictions, in spite of the fact that he will or may be threatened with death. He, he does what he needs to do because he believes that that's what God has called him to do. And engaging yourself in conflict to defend your faith, actually trying to kill other people of other faiths to defend your own faith, doesn't make you a saint. That's my own belief, anyway. Anyway, this is going to polarize my viewers, I'm sure. Uh, but it, it is what it is. I have to speak my mind. Okay, guys, let's move on now to the next event on this day. Um, 1808, Andrew Johnson was born. So Andrew Johnson, pictured here. He was the 17th U.S. president. Yes, this is the answer to question number three. First ever U.S. president to be impeached. His name was Andrew Johnson. He was born on this day in 1808. And then a year later, yes, William E. Gladstone pictured right here. He was the guy who served record four terms in office. No other Prime Minister of the United Kingdom has served four terms in office. And then in terms of years, he was a fifth 
longest serving prime minister, the only prime minister to have served four terms. Um, he also served as um, Chancellor of the Exchequer four times, serving over 12 years. Gladstone was born in Liverpool to Scottish parents. So this is William Ewart Gladstone, served as Prime Minister of Great Britain four times between the years of 1864 to 18, sorry, 1868 to 1874, 1880 to 1865, to 1885, and then 1886, and 1892 to 1894. 1845, on this day, the U.S. annexed Texas. That annexation was approved on this day. So the annexation of what used to be known as the Republic of Texas by the United States was approved by the U.S. Congress in 1845 on this day. It sparked the Mexican War because land between the Rio Grande and the Nueces River was disputed territory. But as they say, the rest is history. Texas, which obviously now occupies the borders within the state here, as you can see from my arrow, um, Texas was born, was admitted to the Union on this day. Um, I guess at the time, Texas stretched up to the north, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, parts of Kansas and parts of Oklahoma. Okay, let's move on now to the year 1876. His name is Paul Casal y de Filo, usually known in English by his Spanish name Pablo Casals. He was a Catalan cellist, composer and conductor generally regarded as the preeminent cellist of the first half of the 20th century and one of the greatest cellists of all time. He was born in 1876 in Vendrell, Spain. He made many recordings throughout his career of solo, chamber and orchestral music, including some as conductor, but he is perhaps best remembered for the recordings of the Bach cello suites he made from 1936 to 1939. He was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1963 by President John F. Kennedy, though the ceremony was presided over by Lyndon B. Johnson. So again, that's the Catalan cellist Paul Casals y de Filo born on this day in 1876. 1917, on this day, Thomas Bradley, pictured here, first African-American mayor of Los Angeles, was born. The year again was 1917. Bradley served five terms as mayor between 1973 and 1993. So for two decades, he was mayor, five terms. He was the first and thus far only African-American mayor of Los Angeles. And his 20 years in office mark the longest tenure by any mayor in the city's history. His election as mayor in 1973 made him the second African-American mayor of a major US city. Bradley retired in 1993 after his approval ratings began dropping subsequent to the 1992 Los Angeles riots. I can see why this guy was so popular. He looks like a cool dude, you know, really nice guy. Um, African-American mayor of a, a city that's a majority white. I mean, obviously we had uh, uh, an African-American president as well in a country that's uh, majority white. So. It's, uh, it's progress, you know, in spite of all the negative things that we say about racism and all the isms. Um, Americans and people in general are, are good. You find that most people are fair-minded, most people like justice. Um, 
You know, I don't want to believe that if most Americans are racist, they would vote Obama to, to office. You know, that this guy, the first African-American mayor of Los Angeles, who served for 20 years, would have, you know, gotten to that position. So it does um, um, give me a lot of faith in humanity that deep down, most of us are good people, you know. Okay, let's move on now to the year 1938. And John Voigt, pictured here. And Voigt was born on this day. He is an American actor who came to prominence in the late 1960s with his Oscar-nominated performance as Joe Buck, a would-be gigolo in Mind Night Cowboy, which was released in 1969. During the 1970s, he became a Hollywood star with his portrayals of a businessman mixed up with murder in the movie called Deliverance that, was, um, that came out in 1972. And uh, a paraplegic Vietnam veteran in Coming Home, 1978, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor and a penniless ex boxing champion in the remake of The Champ in 1979. He is the winner of one Academy Award, having been nominated for four. He has also won four Golden Globe Awards and has been nominated for 11. Wow. On November 21st, 2019, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts. He is, of course, the father of actress Angelina Jolie and actor James Haven. It's interesting that his children didn't take his surname. I suppose Voigt is not um, a very American name. A bit difficult to pronounce, even though it's a short name. Anyway, 1973. On this day, this rapper, who is now late, died at the age of 34, but he was born on this day in 1973. His name was Pimp C. Real name, Chad Lamont. Butler, born in Port Arthur, Texas. He was part of the Dirty South style rap group UGK. You can see the UGK there in the background. He's best known for his contributions to Jay-Z's 2000 smash hit, Big Pimpin. A year later, in 1974, this actor here, his name is Mackie Pfeiffer, spelled M-E-K-H-I-P-H-I-F-E-R. Born Mackie Tira Pfeiffer in Harlem, New York. He has a starring role as Greg Pratt on NBC's television program ER. He has appeared in several films, including Soul Food, 8 Mile, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, O and Clockers. So, Mackie Pfeiffer, happy birthday, born on this day in 1974. That would make him 76 years old today. And last but not least, yes, I gave you a puzzle at the beginning of this. Question one and question two about to be answered. So this is the disease. Guinea was declared free of Ebola by the World Health Organization some two years after the deadly disease was reported in the country and sparked an outbreak in Western Africa. So Guinea is the country the disease was Ebola. I'll show you some more pictures now. You know, I'm really, really proud of the way that the governments of the countries that were affected in West Africa handled this disease. Special mention would go to this lady. Um, I'll show you her picture, I'll mention her name as well. Um, her family, obviously, would be thinking about her, um, how she basically gave her life to save millions and millions of Africans, you know, people from all over the world as well. You know, um, the countries that handled this disease, <clears throat> the way they went about it, with the limited resources they had, or they still have, I love my heart to them, honestly. They've handled it much, much, much better than the Western world have handled the coronavirus. Yeah. Okay, I'll show you more pictures. So that's a poster there. It's talking about the Ebola disease outbreak. Um, okay, I started with this. 
Okay, this is from um, Liberia's capital city, Monrovia. Primary school students queuing to wash their hands. I guess before taking the um, vaccine. And these are the countries that were hardly uh, that were hit really bad by the Ebola virus: Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, with the areas where the um, it's color coded to obviously represent cases. Number of days since last confirmed case, and so on. Okay. So, there's people just doing their best to make sure that the virus is contained. Okay, so just watch all the pictures. You know, it's really, really commendable the efforts that were made to contain this virus. And then um, the last picture I'm going to show you is a picture of a brave lady who sadly succumbed to the disease. And um, yeah, pay the ultimate price. But she is a hero, you know. So these are the countries where the virus um, affected. Countries in red, obviously, were heavily affected countries, as you can see from the legend here. At least one imported case of Ebola in the yellow countries. And then countries at high risk of an Ebola introduction in blue. Uh, CDC country office, so Center for Disease Control country office in Congo and, you know, all the yeah, the countries in um, that circle, the green circle, yeah, obviously, CDC, country office. So, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Senegal, or not Senegal, Senegal is a CDC, malaria resident advisor. Okay, and then last but not least, um, obviously, these are distressing pictures. I don't know if that guy survived. And then this lady, yeah, the inimitable heroine exits. Dr. Stella Ameo at that devil. You know, um, I had to go out to her family. She essentially laid her life for to save millions and millions of people. Um, so um, we hope and pray that there are a lot more people like her out there who would give their all to make sure that people lives that lives are saved okay um i talked about learning from history in my previous videos how history tends to repeat itself i wonder who the heroes of the um, coronavirus would be in the uk so far the staff of the national health service have been absolutely fantastic you know cases are rising again and um, you wonder how they cope it's a very very stressful job um i was really touched a few months ago early on this year when every thursday evening i think it was at 8 p.m people would come out and cheer the nhs you know actually um it was so touching that there were a few tears you know that dropped from my eyes because you know, I come from a family where my father was a doctor, my sister is a doctor, um, and I have cousins, I mean, my cousins on my, my maternal side of the family, every single um, aunt or uncle, or every single aunt of mine on my maternal side has a child who is a doctor, every single one, you know. On my dad's side, my, you know, I have at least one medical doctor as well, um, cousin. So... You know, it's it's nice to see that there are people out there who put others first before themselves. And, you know, the world is a much better place because of these people. So we shouldn't take them for granted. We should remember that these people are literally putting their lives on the line um, for the sake, for, for our sakes. You know? Okay, guys, um, that is it for today's Today in History. Um, join me tomorrow. Thanks for dropping by. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to share and to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.